this big black reacts to the Batman will be nothing but spoilers. If you don't want to be spoiled, turn away now. Carmine Falcone is dying. And in the moment of his death, it's instructive of how this film is representative of a master, Matt Reeves, at the height of his powers. We see in the eyes of Falcone a reference back to a story he told earlier in the film about seeing the eyes of Bruce Wayne on the stairwell above as Bruce's father, Thomas Wayne, conducted surgery on Falcone on the dining room table. This movie in capturing, recapturing, represent, representing, and uh, revisiting detail like that ends up being overall all we hoped for and more. Let's begin with who the movie's for and who it's not for. You know, my wife is, is a nice lady. And this movie is probably not for her. You know, I saw it uh, at a fan presentation uh, in IMAX. And the brutality is visceral. You can feel with the bass and the use of sound and image uh, what happens to individuals who are harmed in this film. Um, that level of brutality is probably not for her. It's also not for folks who aren't prepared to sit for three hours. You know, it has to be said that this movie is about three hours and those folks might want to wait and see it at home. But if you're a superhero fan, if you're a fan of the Batman, if you're a fan of varying takes on the character of Bruce Wayne and, and the Cape Crusader, this is for you. The setting is in year two, and I would argue probably at the end of the second year of Bruce Wayne being Batman. So we're, we're crossing over into year three as, as I see it. Um, and we have a setting for Batman year two in the comics that we can compare and contrast to the one we find here. Of course, Batman year two was written by Mike Barr and penciled by Alan Davis and the, and the seminal Todd McFarlane. And in the comics, what we come to understand versus the film uh, is that both contain someone more committed to the devastating aspects of Batman than Batman himself. In the comics, it's the Reaper. In the film, it's the Riddler. But also in both forms of media, someone Batman is forced to deal with to get to a greater evil is present. Right? So in the comics, it is the murderer of his parents, Joe Chill, in the movie, it's Carmine Falcone. He had to go to him to understand more, to get access to the greater evil. Setting matters. Setting matters not only uh, in other forms of media, but for the film itself. We are uh, blessed with an incredible setting that is not only Gotham City, um, but with the overall atmosphere, plot, and timing that reflects that Matt Reeves knows what we know, right? He knows that in the general consciousness, there is a sense of how Batman begins because of the movie Batman Begins with Christian Bale. He knows that in the overall consciousness of film goers who would engage fully on a film like this, there is a sense of what a Batman jaded and seemingly alone after decades of doing this work could look like in, in Ben Affleck's uh, interpretation. Uh, and so he finds a new space and place for us to experience Batman, which is this year two transition to year three moment. And the reason I say that is because if I recall correctly, it's Bruce in his own journal who talks about having done this for two years. So you're coming to the end of two years if you've done it for two years and you're transitioning into something else. And Pattinson and Reeves 
imbue a certain emotive energy for that type of Batman, that new Batman story. It's still replete when we find him with a focus on vengeance, with no sense of hope for himself, and again through his journals and his narration, only a little for Gotham. It's almost like a lost cause. He's going to try, probably die trying, and is okay with that. And the whole arc of the movie is how does that emotive energy become something else, something that points points toward any kind of hope? How does it challenge the old and bring in the new? You know, if you were to be a and d fan, you'd call Bella Real lawful good, right? The new mayor-elect replacing the chaotic good, chaotic neutral, <laughs> chaotic evil, some would say, but the chaotic good of the system before her. And then you have chaotic evil in Oz, the penguin, replacing the lawful evil of Falcone, someone who liked systems and institutions but wanted them to work entirely for him. Whereas Oz, the penguin, wouldn't be a traitor like that. He he pulled out his gun in front of 30 officers in order to try and shoot Falcone before Nashton did. Also, it has to be said, in terms of setting, that Nashton's ability to rally like-minded, crazy-ass people via social media feels very 2020 to 2022, Uh, maybe 2016 to 2022. Uh, So setting matters, and, you know, it's one of the best settings, the best use of settings that I've seen in a superhero film to date. Reeves must be complimented on that. Characters matter. You know, Bruce Wayne, the Batman, of course, more vital, sad, and broken than almost any other depiction. There are moments with Bale, particularly early on in Batman Begins, moments with Keaton. But this Bruce Wayne, this Robert Pattinson depiction, is more vital, sad, and broken than almost any other take on The Dark Knight. You know, And we examine him at a key moment, that transition from vengeance to, and ultimately death to being a dark avatar for hope and life at the end. Now, Nolan examined this in The Dark Knight and really contrasted Batman with Harvey Dent. But Reeves further distills that question here and says, how can Batman himself be something that the people of Gotham after this movie would say, no, you don't know Batman. I I saw what he did when he lit that flare and saved those lives. You know, he is their Dark Knight in shining armor. Directly, not um, as proxy as it was in, in The Dark Knight or in contrast to you know Harvey Dent as it was in The Dark Knight. Pattinson seemed to go for a Batman so inhabiting of his suit and mask that we don't even question how someone so still skinny <laughs> overpowers the dining room table, let alone the underbelly of Gotham. The kinetic nature of the choreography was outstanding. Um our ability to actually see technique from a martial arts perspective was refreshing. Um, And we can imagine that there is a whole universe of stories between the training that Alfred gives Bruce that's alluded to both in the movie and in the prequel novel um, and where we find Bruce today Um, We can imagine that he took a little tour around the globe and and maybe we'll see some of that uh, that we sometimes see in the comics. But the characterization of Bruce Wayne and the Batman here is outstanding. Selina Kyle, the Catwoman, her arc of determination, then loss, then retribution, release, and ultimately a delivering of an alternative timeline for Bruce and herself. You know, she asks Bruce to come with her. Come away. We can go do something else. And you can imagine that that's very real. That's a very real option for Bruce. And that there is pain in walking away from it. Um, That's a powerful arc for Selina Kyle. She finishes never really knowing who Batman is. And the reveal of her as Falcone's daughter, but ultimately her claim to be really her mother's child, as she puts pistol in the direction of her biological father is powerful. She fully rejects who he is and what he's willing to do to innocent people, 
particularly her friend. And we're left to imagine how she became so capable and complete, but fully understand how she remains a bit broken. Zoe Kravitz work with her fellow actors under the direction of Reeves is incredible, outstanding work. Edward Nashton, the Riddler, the Riddler is the single most compelling enemy of the people and of Batman since Ledger's Joker, and in some ways more realistic a take on why someone would work so hard to take down the system. We understand, a la Killmonger and Black Panther, we understand why Nashton is angry. So does Bruce. In fact, he uses Bruce's language to illuminate a darker response than Bruce is willing to undertake with regard to harm and trauma and response to that. We know he has to be stopped. We know he's gone too far, but we get it. Uh, at the same time that we, he must be stopped, the impetus that leads to an Edward Nashton has to be understood. And in the moment where Gotham is recovering through the lens of Bella Real and the, the lawful good replacing the chaotic good, when we have some hope, we can see that what's being layered on top of that with Penguin, who we'll get to in a minute, but also with whoever that is in the cell next to Riddler becoming his friend. And I think in the credits it says uh, unnamed cellmate or something like that. It does not name that person as the Joker, but it looks like they're leaving themselves flexibility to name that individual as the clown prince of crime. We know that this story isn't over for Nashton. James Gordon, surrounded by corruption, but not completely, Reeves offers up a moment where at least some cops seeing an opportunity are ready to join Gordon to stand for something better. Uh, and that scene, I think, was important because the narrative of Gordon as a single honest cop in a city full of corrupt cops is unsustainable, right? You know, Gotham is supposed to be like New York City. New York City is 12 to 20 million people, depending on how you measure it. And the idea that the largest police force in any major city would only have one honest cop uh, is a broken one. So I appreciated the idea that there were cops who were looking around going, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is protect myself and my family, but I didn't join for this. And seeing an opportunity to lean in and do the right thing, they leaned in with him. I, I, I appreciated the hopeful narrative that Reeves was trying to connote there. You know, Even though I reject the bad apples because we tend to not complete the saying bad apples spoil the bunch and that cops as a culture have a lot of work to do in this story. In this moment, it felt more credible that James would have a small squad of cops who were ready to do something better, do something different. The arc of him, James Gordon fully understanding the work ahead and the single mindedness when he began to understand the scope of this, of securing the one thing that seemed to point to hope, not Batman at the time, but mayor real was powerful. You know, he did what he needed to do to get to her. Um, and then it took something extraordinary from a superhero uh, to save the day. But I look forward to more stories uh, around Jeffrey Wright's portrayal of Gordon. That was powerful. And Oz, or the Penguin, he came across as ready, waiting, and willing, but he ends the movie in more of the fullness of his own power. Here was a criminal fully committed to the game. I'm excited to see what he was and what he's to become in any HBO Max spinoff, uh, if the rumors are to be believed. The overall message and the overall ability of this film to articulate that message is really transcendent. In, in 2022, the Batman is reminding, uh, reminding us that we must transform our anger, our trauma, and our sense of wanting to punish someone or something for our circumstances into positive action imbued with some form of hope and resultantly meaning. We must do that. And I thank Reeves for working so hard 
with this cast and this crew to articulate that message. It gets at this message well in those I could watch this over and over types of ways a great film does. Do I have any nitpicks? Of course. The physicality of Pattinson's body, regardless of the great, great choreography. I'm not sure if I believe uh, that that frame could get all that done. Um, took me out of it maybe one or two times, but it's a nitpick. Nashton's seawall plan seemed a little bit too simple, a little bit too accessible. Um, I worry if any group of schmucks can blow up seven vans and flood the major city in our country. Let's hope that that's not the case. Um, But other than that, you know, this was a masterpiece from start to finish. 9.7 out of 10. It doesn't get much better than this in terms of cinema. Go see it. Enjoy it. Uh, The Batman. Worth every single dollar. Gives us all we hope for and more. 